Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is a world of Ain Shalom. There just is no peace. And regardless of what they say to you, peace and safety, all is going to be well. Uh, we just cannot help but wonder if we have not truly entered into the last days here where things are going to rapidly change uh, over the next months. Uh, and, and maybe I should just leave it at months as far as that goes. I know there's a lot of uh, teachers out there that are telling you, don't worry, calm down. The president has passed the stimulus package. And even I've noticed the president has kind of uh, used some of the social media jargon there to make it look like that uh, he's right there with you. He's on your side. And yet the people just do not realize that's just not the case. Uh, there is a beast system that is being set up. And unfortunately, there are a lot of false apostles out there that have helped set that up. Um, I want to also start by saying to you, I apologize. Uh, we've been off the air for several days now. And uh, we've just been taking some precautionary measures. And I, I just can't go into that as of yet. Uh, we may or may not allow comments at this time. Uh, and it's not that we don't love you guys, but we just there's there's reasons behind that. And in the very, very near future, we'll be back fully uh, being able to produce the way we need to do. Uh, and of course, we're going to really focus on biblical teachings as well. And I think when we do that, you'll be able to read between the lines because uh, there's a lot of sinister plans going on. And uh but we want you to think about these things as we share with you biblical uh, passages, prophecies, thinking, also thinking about uh, getting your soul right with God, making sure everything is ready to go because we are truly, truly in the last days now. We are definitely in prophetic times. Uh, and, and I'm not here to encourage you to, to buy gold and silver and support the building of the third temple or to, uh, pa, uh, pa, uh, excuse me, what would you say, uh, uh, give you some kind of a message that makes you think that everything's all hunky and dory because Trump's got everything under control. Uh, I think that some very, very bad things are coming, and I'm going to share some things with you to kind of, I think, that'll help prove that point. Um, I have right now with me, of course, I have the Bible laid out here because we're going to be talking about some things uh, a dear sister shared with me that really caught, made me do some thinking as well. But this book right here, I want you to be able to see the book itself, all right? It was written by, uh, I think it was Bill Cooper, former United States Naval Intelligence uh, man, and Bill Cooper died not long after this book came out public. He, uh, if I understand right, somebody was telling me he was with the CIA, uh, but he, re he revealed what the Illuminati plan was, and... Just to kind of make you think a little bit more along the lines of about where we are right now, I wanted to share with you uh, from page 176 and 177 some things that he says here. All intellectuals, rulers, and governing uh, bodies agree that population is the biggest threat to civilization that we know of today. It does not matter what you believe. If they believe it, you will be affected because they have the power. The New World Order will el eliminate the population threat in several ways. Complete control of the individual's behavior may be established using electronic or chemical implants. Uh, no one will be allowed to have a child without permission. Stiff penalties wait for those who ignore the law. The violent, the old, and the infirm, the handicapped, and the unproductive will be killed. Private property will be abolished since religion helped to create the population problem. Notice that. Since religion helped to create the population problem, it will not be tolerated except for the approved state-controlled religion which will evolve according to man's needs. Joseph Campbell explains this concept ex excellent, excellently in his series with Bill Moyers called The Power of the Myth. Cash will disappear. With it, most crime will disappear, but total control of each individual will be the price we pay. Now, I've already been getting inside information about the cash disappearance, and from what I'm being told, uh, yes, they're going to use the coronavirus to say this is why we have to do away with the currency. And people I've talked to 
just on the streets getting a feel for what people are thinking or wow you'd be surprised how many of them are for it they say well money is dirty anyway you're being programmed as you listen to the news uh, to accept these things and well I just won't go any further than that let me continue on over, over on page 177 he goes on to say, it is true that without population or the bomb problem, the elect would use some other excuse to bring about the new world order. They have plans to bring about things like earthquakes, war, the Messiah, the Messiah, you heard it right, and the extraterrestrial landing and economic collapse. They might bring it all about, uh, all, excuse me, they might bring about all of these things just to make uh, dead gum sure that it does work. Now he uses the other word. They will do whatever is necessary to succeed. The Illuminati has all the bases covered and you are going to have to be on your toes to make it through the coming years. Okay? So according to the plans, many people are going to be between now, are going to die between now and the year well, he puts the year 2000, but if, the, uh, but if these plans are not successful, the human race could become extinct. Well, it looks like they're off schedule based on what he had wrote in here. But the point is, this book by William Cooper, Bill Cooper, Behold a Pale Horse, uh, is really, really an eye-opener. And I think it's worth reading. I don't know if you'd be able to get a hold of it now, but uh, maybe you can find a way online to get a digital copy copy and be able to read that yourself. Um, I was contacted by a, a precious uh, friend, and I won't say who, but contacted just uh, recently, and would, shared with me that uh, they had um, some things that they were going through, and uh, I would just say divine providence brought them to a place, I'm Kind of, and I do apologize to my precious friend there uh, for not saying it the, the right way, but I'm kind of being evasive and, uh, for a reason. But, um, but one of the things that came to their heart was the, uh, the dream that I had years ago about the giant serpent that came after me. The first time I wounded that serpent, the second time, and I'm not going into all the details about the serpent, but I remember the Lord said to me, or actually the angel said to me, um, the Holy Spirit, however, I don't, I don't know how to explain all that, but uh, he said that the next time he comes, he'll be far more fierce, and the only way you can kill him is you have to cut his head off. Uh, I remember that as if it were yesterday. Well, the odd thing is, uh, this precious friend had contacted me that wanted to talk to me, and specifically told my wife about that particular dream. And I told my wife, I said, well, that's kind of odd because I said, you know, I went on, you know, just try to see what other people were saying that's going on. I, I clicked on Steve Quell's website. I couldn't figure out how to navigate it to find his video. So I just went to YouTube and looked up Steve Quell, found a, a thing that said Steve Quell YouTube. And the video that was uploaded as of the 25th, I started playing that. And I don't know if I began at the beginning or if it was part way into it. I forget now. But he had two animated characters that were doing like an interview together. And I'm listening to this, this, uh, this part of it. And the first thing I start hearing is about this serpent and the serpent being wounded. And I, and I didn't recognize the voice at first. I'm, I'm listening to it and I'm like, wow, that's interesting what he's saying there. But then next thing I know, I realize it's my voice. And Steve Quell had used animated uh, characters. Uh, and maybe it was an interview me and him did together. I don't even know, but we were doing an interview, uh, whatever this was, and he had it posted with animated characters. Uh, so it, it really caught my attention. And then I thought, wow, yeah, you know, just going back, re reliving it once again. But then this friend contacted me and shared with me that God, they were reading in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, but then the Lord caused them to go up the page into chapter 10 uh, and specifically verse 27 going down to verse 33. And I want to read this to you. Uh, and, uh, and this is when a, a very supernatural thing uh, occurred with them that brought them back to the dream that I had. So let me just share this with you. Uh, and it shall come to pass in that day that this burden shall be taken away from off that, thy shoulder. And... 
his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He has come to uh, uh, Aiath, and he has passed to Migron and Mitch and Mash, and hath laid up his carriage. Um, now, actually, let's see. Let's go down a little further. The, the part, the, verse 27, though, just notice what it says here. And it shall come to pass in that day that, that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Okay? But if you drop down, say, to verse 30, Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galim. Cause it to be heard unto Laash, O poor of Anathoth. Uh, Mad Madmanah is removed, the inhabitants of Gibam, and gather, them, gather themselves to flee. As yet shall he remain at Nob that day, he shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones and statue, stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humble. All right, verse 33 is really that key verse that, that that friend pointed out. It says in verse 34, And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with the iron of the Lebanon and shall fall by the mighty one. But verse 33 is the key right there. And uh, so I'll read it to you again. Behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts shall lop off the bow with terror and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down and the haughty shall be humble. That sounds like, almost like you'd be looking at an elite class today, but an elite class that is part of that Nephilim race. And I think that's where we get this part about the, the haughty ones as well. But notice though, that is the, the bow is lopped off. The bow, that's the highest branch in the tree. That is the head of the tree. And of course, the friends shared with me thinking about the Kabbalah tree, the Sephirot tree, in other words, the Sephirot tree. And what, does, what do the, uh, the, 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 the Talmudists believe in the Sephirot tree? They believe in this holy serpent. The holy serpent, and that holy serpent is not of God because he's not holy in the first place. It's the devil. That's exactly what it is. But I am amazed at how many people are, are <laughs> using the, the religion to promote all these false ideologies and stuff. Right? I, I mean, it is absolutely unfathomable the things that are being done in this day here. Now, I also want to share with you, because there was more to it than just this here. Um, let's see. Now, of course, after you go through that, then we get into Isaiah 11, as the friend said to me, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the spirit of counsel, okay, and, and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of fear, right? So Christ is the true branch, but the head or the bow of Satan, that, that enemy there, has got to be completely taken off. As the scripture spoke about the woman's seed would bruise the head of the serpent's seed. And Christ did that how? How did he bruise the head of that serpent's uh, children? Because notice, it would, that's what the prophecy was. The woman seed, which would be, was speaking of the prophecy of the coming of the Mashiach, the Christ, the Yeshua, he would actually wound the head of the serpent's children. And when he exposed, as he did in Matthew 12 and Matthew 23 and other places in the scripture, where he calls the Pharisees serpents and vipers and a generation of vipers, and said that all the blood shed all the way back to Abel, was put upon them. And we know the Pharisees didn't exist back then, so he must be dealing, as he said, a generation of vipers. He's dealing with a reptilian race that he's talking about. Right? And that's exactly what happened. So he wounded them by exposing who they are. 
So in order to lop off the head, in order to be able to take that serpent's head off, is to expose exactly where it is today. Just like Yeshua, like for example, Yeshua chose 12, 12 apostles, right? And one of them, he said, was a devil. He knew one was a devil. And it was Judas, right? Judas was that apostle. One of the twelve. And then what's interesting is, that, and, and I actually said this the other day uh, to my wife. We were talking and I said, you know, we have the scripture that says, they say they are Jews and they are not. But in the synagogue of Satan, which cho shows you they're masquerading as Jews, that's your Pharisaic bloodline. Okay? But then you have even worse. You have, uh, in the book of Revelation, in, in the churches there, where uh, that's speaking of there, chapter 2, and let me just see, I forget exactly where it's at, but I'll pull it up. I think it's right there at the beginning. Yeah, it's right here. And the angel uh, of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in, the, in, in his right hand, and walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars." And isn't it interesting that little organization that is backing Trump runs around claiming that they are apostles. That new apostolic group right there. Run around. That's, that's what they call themselves. We're apostle this and apostle that. All these big heads there. And they got their, they've lifted up Trump. And, and do you realize that's what divided the body of Christ? It wasn't. It wasn't. And Paul, I'll tell you right now, my, my friend, it wasn't me dividing the body of Christ by telling you who the beast system was. No, sir. It was those that are part of that apostolic reformation group that are backing Trump and making him like a god, and you have totally forgotten who Jesus Christ is. Instead, you put an image of a man on a coin and sell it to raise money for the third temple. That's a shame. You want to talk about dividing the body of Christ? There's where it is. And they knew exactly what they were doing when they brought him in. They used the, the Analytica, the AI technolo te technology with Google Analytica. And what did they do? They went in there and they found out just exactly what they could do in order to be able to, um, uh, when they did these analytics there, what was I going to say there? They, they, they went in there and they were able to, by getting into the analytics, they were able to uh, determine with your sociology and your Facebook and your social media, things like that, they found out what you liked. And all that information was sent back to them so that when they elected Trump, he would say exactly the words that would cause all the patriots and the Christians to go wild. Make America great again. I would love to see America great again, but not under an antichrist system. You know, build a wall. So see... They put a man in there and then cause you to believe that he was for you, that he was all together as one with you when he was not. And then they brought in this fake apostles going around. And I know some of them. I know some of them. They're way up in the ranks in there. And I know just how sinister and evil they are. Yeah. But... As God said, you found them to be liars. They are liars. That's who divided the body of Christ. But then again, maybe they weren't part of the body in the first place. You know, I'd rather stay clean before Jesus Christ and stand there on the day of judgment and know that I was telling the people the truth than to sit there and lie to them and get a little favor with some of these government people where I can sit there in my house and make my videos and no big problem and uh, all will be well. So when they go to gathering everybody else up that went against what they were doing and taking them to the FEMA camps, I'm not part of, the, you know, the, they don't have to be part of that group. Unfortunately, I know though that I would end up being part of that group they haul off to the FEMA camps. 
And of course, these fake apostles will be telling you, we tried to warn you, brother, you could have been part of the thing. See, the Messiah came to Israel. But we'll still meet on the Day of Judgment. That's one thing's for sure. Okay? Let me go uh, continue on, though, with, the, with my beloved friend there that shared these things with me. Uh, also, in Amos chapter 2, let me just find the right one here. And um, you know, oh, let me just read this part right here. Um, in relation to the cutting off the top of the tree that we see in Isaiah, um, the vav, which is the serpent, and the middle pillar of the separate tree with its head at the top, and the top is the keter, or uh, which is also means crown. Katriel is the crown of God. Keter, kater, kater is actually how you say that. And, uh, and just kind of interesting, which means crown, or in this case, corona, and, uh, which just kind of interesting how that goes. I was actually looking for the one in, here we go, Amos 2.9. So let me, let me take you over to Amos chapter 2, verse 9, and we'll close. I'm trying not to be too lengthy on the videos uh, until we get things better set up. And again, I greatly apologize uh, to you and uh, for being so long off the air. I know there's a lot of people worried about what's going on. Um, so anyway, uh, yet destroyed I... Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his root from beneath. And also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness and all the possession of the land of the Amorites. Um, let me look at this. Oop, I messed up. My apology. Yes. So this is, and of course, as, as it was being shared with me, that's exactly what God will do, is God will actually destroy their fruit from above and below. And that, if you remember, this is what John was prophesying about as well. When John came, John was saying, the axe is laid unto the root of the tree, and every tree that doesn't bring forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's exactly what's happening. Anyway, thank you for listening. Those of you that support this ministry, I want to thank you for your love and your kindness. Uh, I do at this time, because we're not certain of how the mail is going to go with this corona scare right now. Uh, if you still feel in your heart to support the work we're doing, and you want to do so via by our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, where you can donate there to PayPal or Patreon either way. Uh, you can sign up on Patreon. I know Yana's writing an article for Patreon today. Uh, I don't know when I'll get to do a video for Patreon as of right now. Most everything we're going to put here on Israeli News Live. I still will do more serious things though, over on Patreon. But uh, we thank you for your kindness and your love. Shalom in a world of Ain Shalom.